Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the bench today, we have the Zoe ZTQS7 microcurrent AC DC clamp meter, which has been kindly sent in by Zoe Instruments. So thank you very much for that. And we'll put it through its paces and see what it can do. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website. And let's get started. So this was kindly sent in by Zoe Instruments or Zotec Instruments for me to have a look at and do a, a quick review. So that's what we're going to do. So let's have a look at some of its features. So we can measure up to 100 amps AC DC with a um, minimum starting measurement of 10 milliamp and a re resolution of 1 milliamp. It also supports true RMS measurements with displays of up to 6,000 counts. Not too bad. We've got AC current surge measurement, voltage peak hold, data hold. We've got DC voltage up to 1,000 volts, AC voltage up to 750 volts, AC DC current up to 100 amps. Resistance, capacitance, frequency, duty cycle, and more. So yeah, quite a um, feature-packed unit. I never had a clamp meter before, so it's the first one for me. But as we take it out of the bag, we can see we've got some goodies along with it. So we've got a nice bag there to keep it in. We've got a temperature probe, which we'll be testing in a little bit got some meter leads so let's have a look at these meter leads and yeah not fully silicon but yeah okay you got to remember that um, these are uh, budget meters should we say Zoe has always um, produced good quality meters for a reasonable price so yeah, not too bad. And here's the clamp meter itself, as you would expect from a clamp meter. It's got the, the clamp at the top to put around the cables, a rotary selection, battery compartment with a screw in it. Looks like it takes two AAAs. Got data hold and light switch on the side. And there's our amperage clamp that fits around the cable that you would be um, measuring. So let's put some batteries in this thing. Let's get it fired up and see what we can do. So they've supplied some batteries with it. Don't know how good they are, but we'll put them in just like so. There, nice. So let's get on with it. So let's power it up. So we turn the rotary selector and each one of the selections has got a different function. Some of them are selectable via the selection button, just like so. So AC, DC voltage, frequency, duty cycle, back to millivolts. And the next one along, we've got ohms, continuity, diode test, capacitance test. And then we've got the three ranges for the amp. So 6 amp, 60 amp and 100 amp. And you have to switch between AC and DC on those. So yeah, quite easy to use. Very clear, no um, complicated menus to navigate. So yeah, all nice and easy. So I've got it hooked up to my bench power supply, DC reading. And we're measuring it against a considerably more expensive meter. And we're reading 12.2 volts. Yeah, absolutely fine. And it's reading the voltage nice and quickly as well. The auto range is working nice and quick. And it's doing exactly as it should be. So I want a continuity. Nice and responsive bleep. That's just fine. No problem with that. Yeah, all good. Let's have a look at some resistance readings. So we're just doing a resistance on a board. Yep, 
absolutely fine. I think they should be 8.2Ks, I think. So reading about 8K, that's absolutely fine. 8.8.1, yep, all good. So now we'll do a current test. So I've got my bench power supply on its 3.1 amp output. And we're going to short the leads together. And let's see what this can read. So we're not reading anything at the moment because we're on AC. So we need to press the button, switch it onto DC. And there we go. So minus three amps it's showing because we're on the positive lead. If we move it onto the negative lead, we can now see that it's showing three amps. Now with me not having a clamp meter before, I didn't realize that you had to have the cable as close to the, um, the clamp as possible. So whilst moving the cable around the clamp, you can see that the amperage reading changes, which you would expect because this thing is picking up on the the current flowing. So I suppose it has to be near that, that core that's inside the clamp. But once we get it up to the top where it should be, it's reading 3.1 amps, which is exactly what the bench power supply is delivering. Yep, absolutely fine. So let's have a look at the temperature probe. So just got it between my fingers. Nothing really to see there. Put it onto Fahrenheit. Just like so. Yeah, I'm not dead. Let's put it on something a little bit hotter. So we'll put it on a warming up soldering iron. As you can see, it's ramping up nice and quickly on the temperature there. Obviously, depending on where you put it on the actual iron will depend on the, the temperature that's being read. I didn't realize I still, uh, still had it on Fahrenheit. So when it got up to 500, I was like, okay, it should only be 300, 300 odd um, degrees. So we'll put it back to degree C. We'll just get it onto a nice hot spot on the iron. Yeah, about 300. Yep, yeah, all good. Fantastic. So temperature works nicely. So I've got a um, a mast for my antennas at the back, and it actually uses a ATV winch that I've got connected onto a 12 volt battery. And I've always wondered how much current this actually draws when it's actually putting the antenna up. So we've got it around the negative lead, and we're going to switch the aerial into the up position so maximum load and to my surprise it's only drawing seven amps i honestly thought this would be drawing a lot more because it's having to it's having to work up a big mast which is quite heavy and the four amps is going down as you would expect with least load but yeah seven amps as it's going up not too bad at all, not too bad. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to find something that's going to deliver a little bit more current. So here's my electricity consumer unit and distribution. And we've got it hooked around the main input to the consumer unit. And at the moment, there's only a washing machine on. You can see we're drawing near enough four amps due to the washing machine motor starting and stopping, doing its cycle. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch a normal everyday household kettle on. And we'll see how much current it shows up on the meter. 
So there's a kettle on. Bang. So we're drawing 11 amps off the grid, should we say. And then we're going to put the electric oven on. Which should be drawing considerably more. Probably about 13, 14 amps. It will probably draw. There we go, 22. So about, about 11 amps. So that's roughly that's roughly 22 amps being pulled off the grid there. It's going up and down because of the washing machine. So we'll turn the oven back off. And then we'll turn the kettle off and we're back down to the what the washing machine was doing. Yeah, not too bad. Works nice and easy. So let's do some component tests. So I've got a resistor and a diode. So I'll put it into diode test. As you would expect, 0.6 forward. And nothing on the reverse. I'll put it into resistance. See how quick the ohms reads. So 1k resistor. 0.997, yep, not too bad at all. It's quite quick in reading that. Not too bad with the accuracy, yep, very good. So let's try one of these cheap 100 nan capacitors. Now I've never had these read anywhere close to what they should be. And sure enough, it doesn't read anywhere close to where it should be. So let's go to a higher quality 104 capacitor and this should read a lot closer. 97 nan. So it's a close to 100 nanofarads. Yep, absolutely fine. Well within spec. And let's have a look at the frequency. So I've got my DDS frequency generator on. Yep, yeah, it's reading that fine, no problem at all. Let's change the output frequency. So 100k, yep, yeah, fine. Reads that quite nice. Let's drop it down to put it on a 1k tone. Yep, yeah, fine, no problem. Reading that just nicely. And last last but not least, we have a backlight that can be switched on when needed by pushing and holding the the hold button and do a, doing the same again to switch it off. So all in all, quite a um, quite a feature packed meter, quite easy to use. Its readings are accurate, yeah, it's good. Um, like I say, it's got loads of features, 100 amps, resistance, capacitance, diode, frequency, temperature, AC surge current, voltage peak hold, duty cycle. Yeah, what more can you expect from a clamp meter? And of course, with it being Zoe, it is always very reasonably priced. So again, thank you Zoe Instruments or Zotec Instruments for sending me this to have a play with and review and put on here for all you people to have a look at. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net, where all my boards are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.